you know, I had to take this in my own hands. And especially after being in the pharmaceutical industry and selling it, I was like, this just doesn't, things just didn't make sense. Val, how did you find Carnivore? Well, I found Carnivore, I think like how a lot of people do, where they are just searching for answers and trying to solve some problems that they're having. Um, so I tried keto for a while, but it just wasn't giving me the results I needed. I had a lot of autoimmune issues and, you know, I was a busy mom raising two beautiful girls, going to dance competitions, working, et cetera. And um, I was also a pharmaceutical rep for a long time. And um, after I left that industry, because I just had to get out, um, I started to kind of explore my health and I wanted to make sure I was healthy as possible for as long as possible uh, to, you know, take care of my girls and, and to enjoy life. And so I started with the keto, but then I found the carnivore diet because I was, I was like a big Jordan Peterson listener to <laughs> like a huge fan. And then I saw Michaela would talk about the, uh, the lion diet. I think that's what she calls it where it's much more, it's like the most strict carnivore there can be. And she was talking about it. She had a lot of those autoimmune issues, which I had been suffering from. And so that kind of sparked my interest. And I decided, well, I think it's time to give it a try. So that's what I did. And how long ago was that? That was about two years ago that I really gave carnivore a try because I tried like the um, autoimmune protocol before that, but that was so complicated. Like I just, that kind of, it was too stressful for me <laughs> trying to figure out all of the, you know, uh, taking out and putting in. And I read the book. It was just like wildly intense. I read the book and it, it, it helped me a little bit, but this one was just like easier. So I was like, all right, well, I'll try it. And I tried it about two years ago and I got great results, like amazing results. But then of course, like I was like, oh, I'm good now. And then went off of it, you know. And then that that was horrible. So what was the like, was it like you tried it for three months, then went, okay, I'm good, and then went yeah, back on? Right. Yeah, like three months or so. And I was like, oh, you know what, now I'm good. I'm fine. I can totally cheat on this. And, you know, I can eat whatever. Yeah. Then it hit me hard. But then you're thinking, oh, it's all in my head. This is crazy. So I was kind of in an up and down type thing for, I would say, a few years. Uh, not a few years. I mean, I'd say it was like two years ago. So I'd say months. And then finally, it hit me about three months ago where I've been like, that's it. I, I can't go back. Because honestly, if I cheat on it, even a little bit, I mean, I really pay for it. <laughs> I have to say that I feel it. I feel it right away. <laughs> so so what are, what are the issues that made you realize, okay, well, we've got to take this seriously. Is it like um, arthritis or? A lot of arthritis issues. I would say mood issues are my biggest problem. Like, um, and way back when, when I worked in pharmaceuticals and I called on psychiatrists and everything, I would, um, you know, try out different antidepressants and things like that. And they would work, but it was just sort of a bandit. And then coming off of them was so horrific. It was just like the worst. So I would say that once I decided, listen, I, I, I found out I pretty much have to figure out if this is my diet. And then when I tried carnivore and it worked really well and I felt good, like my mood was better. And that's so important to me, especially when you have kids, you know, you have to, if mom isn't like ready to, you know, take on the world, then forget it. Like it, things aren't going well <laughs> for anybody, for anyone, you know? So, um, I would say mood was the biggest thing. And then once I was on it and things were going well, then I got a lot of like, Oh my gosh, you look great. You look, cause you just naturally lose weight. Well, most people do, you know, you'll lose weight. So. It's almost like that self reinforcing cycle, right? Cause you, you're Correct. hearing feedback from people going, you look great. Everything's better. Yeah, and you're right, right, seeing right. the would, same thing in the mirror. So it uh, just keeps yeah. you going. It does. It does. Until you're like, oh, this is so great now. And I can do whatever I want. And then whoops. <laughs> Back to square one. Not fun. But then it's like I could I almost feel like the dark cloud coming over me again. 
And that's the thing. I, I grew up with a very depressed mother. Like she was always depressed and sick. And which is probably why I went into pharmaceutical sales because I just wanted to do anything I could to like make her better. I just wanted her to be okay and to be better, you know? And um, so I went, I studied biology in college. I was actually pre-med, but because the bills were so insane, you know, um, I just went right after that into the working world. And that's why I went into pharmaceuticals. But I just, I have like a big fear of being sick and like depressed because it's sort of, I grew up in a household like that. So when I would start feeling that come on, it was very terrifying to me. I, I just knew that that's not the life I want to live. I don't want to live that life at all. Like I want to live a life free of depression because I know that especially when you're a mother, like your kids will take that on. They'll feel it. They feel it too because they love you. So they just, and I didn't want them to ever feel that. So that's when yeah. I knew, you know, I had to take this in my own hands. And especially after being in the pharmaceutical industry and selling it, I was like, this just doesn't, things just didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense at all. And if I questioned studies, like that was the other big thing. I was kind of reprimanded by people in the training part department and it's their job to train you to sell the drug. So, you know, I get it. But I mean, when you're reading these studies, you can see how skewed they are. And um, and then the the way I was presenting to doctors, like just very, um, it was just, it was just skewed. Let's say that. Or when you have a study that's like N equals 10, like what? How can you even use that? Like that's insane. But I, I am not proud to say that I did it, but I, I thought like, well, this is just how it's done. But then, you know, my mother, she's been on every drug in the whole world. You name it. She's been on it. She, and she's never better. She's still not better. She'll never be better. But sometimes I, you know, and if you say diet, like that, like forget it, that will never, ever be something that she would ever try because it's like doctors are God. And mm -hmm. I was like, I don't, I just don't want to be like that. I, I know that there's a way. I know there's a way because our bodies are amazing. They're, and they're built to heal. Like when you get a cut and it just heals. I mean, that's, that's what's so beautiful about being human. It's already built in. The, right, uh, but we somehow allowed marketing and big businesses like pharmaceutical companies to, you know, own the the rules about how our bodies are meant to work. And it's like, but but our bodies do all this naturally, the same as animals' bodies. You know, yeah. like if a dog gets sick, it it fasts, it stops eating. You know, yeah, it might have a bit of grass, and that's it. Yeah, but we've somehow made um, doctors, you know, and I understand like doctors, they, they spend a lot of money to go to school and a lot of years and they work so hard and they do, you know, they, they deserve respect for that, but they're not the end all be all. And it's wild how people just assume that they are, you know, it's terrifying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um you you've been eating carnivore and you mentioned you have two daughters. What do your two daughters think of this way of eating? Do they think well, you thought it was really weird at first, you know, but um now they they definitely thought it was they're both teenagers, by the way. So they just thought it was like the strangest thing, but they could see that I feel better. So, you know, that's a plus for them. <laughs> nice mom versus me mom and then um that I look better they can just tell so they're happy and then it's funny because then they'll start sort of trying it too for a little bit they're not super strict because they don't have any problems I mean they're like the most healthy humans on earth but um they're both competitive dancers so it's interesting because they'll start kind of trying it before dance competitions and stuff for a week or so and they feel marked difference so that's something Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's good to just that they know about it, right? Even if they're not doing it, at least they know about it. So mm -hmm. it's always it, there it, as a tool. Exactly. And the fact that they know about it, they don't have to sort of search for it. And they knew that it worked for me. So then if it ever comes along where they end up getting these issues with mood, you know, with depression or anxiety or um, autoimmune stuff, they know where to turn without having to try different 
medications out and things like that. I want to avoid that at all costs. So how is your diet day to day? Are you eating like one, two times? So it's interesting. So since I told you like that, I was a big cheater on the diet a few times. And (laughs) then when I have to go back into it, like it, it gets hard. Like I would say it takes a few weeks for me to not be craving things or be super hungry. So now I'm at the point where I can have like two meals a day and I'm okay. Um, which is huge for me because I used to kind of eat all day, like all day long, like one of those grazing type of people, which I don't know if that's just an emotional thing I was doing or if I was really hungry. Um, But this is interesting since you talked to Brian Gallagher, I was talking to him about this because I was saying that I've always had this issue where I feel like I'm like a baby who like has to eat before bed. (laughs) You know, like babies have like their bottle before bed. Like that's just how they're going to go to sleep or, you know, you nurse the baby and I nurse both of my girls. And, um, it's like, if I, I have to eat before bed and everybody's like, you cannot eat before bed. It's like the worst thing ever. Well, forget it. If I don't have like a full belly, like a baby, there's zero sleep occurring. Like it's not going to happen. So what I've done is, um, like when I wake up in the morning, I don't need to eat breakfast or anything and I'll just go as long as I can. And then I'll have lunch and then I'll do a big pig out session before I go to bed because otherwise there's zero way I'm going to sleep. But what I'll do is I found that the fattier type of um, meat I eat before bed, it's like then I'll finally sleep. So that's kind of been the cure for me is the fattier, the better. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so the saturated fat is actually acting like a soothing kind of thing. It's like, yeah. it's like an yeah. antibiotic. <laughs> right. <laughs> it like pulls me out enough to like go to sleep, you know, or I'm not going to wake up a, a billion times and like go to the fridge or be freaking out about something. So it, that's what helps me is I found that the fattier, the better. And then, you know, I have a full belly, like a big baby. <laughs> so, um, I, I think one of the biggest changes when you go from eat because I'm the, I was the same, I was eating all the time when I it's and it's like a comfort thing. Yeah, totally. It's like when I I was a smoker and that was the comfort thing. It's while you're doing something you want to be smoking, and then sure. once you stop smoking, then I replace that with food. Food, something right? And, it's an organ, right? So yeah. yeah. I, so then it was this massive change for me to go to eating one meal a day and not feeling hungry that whole time and realizing that this is really weird. I don't have to right. be holding something in my hand and, you know, but the biggest change for me was the feeling of satiety because previously feeling full was, you know, your pants were about to burst open. That was when you were full. But now right. it was it was a feeling of not want, not needing to eat, but you didn't feel like you were about to explode right. either. I agree. I completely that 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 feeling of it's like you're just full and it's a good feeling, but you didn't like gorge yourself. And it was always weird because I was always I was hungry a lot, but I think I was just hungry before when I was doing the whole grazing. Because remember grazing grazing was like a big thing for a while. Like oh yeah, you just want to be like. You just want to be like a cow and graze on, and the, but that's actually horrible for you. But of course, like we thought for a few years there that that was the way to go. So, but I was always hungry because I was always eating <laughs> and I never felt full. So that's the, uh, you just touched on one of the interesting things about humans is that we never put two and two together. So, you know, we're always told to, that we should graze, like have four small meals rather than one big yeah. meal. Have eight eight small meals, just graze like a cow. But we never finish the equation and go, but cows are fat. Right. Cows. <laughs> but, you know, like it's upsetting if someone calls you a cow that you don't, you know, they're fat because they graze. 
So what kind of reaction um, do you get to people around you, like family, friends? Oh, they all think it's crazy. They all think it's crazy. <laughs> but, or they'll say something like, oh, it's just like an extreme keto or something like that. And I, when I did the keto, it's funny because, and I've heard you talk about this, and that guy Carrie too, I think. Like when I was on keto, I would have like a million of those like keto snacks that would also tear my stomach up. Like it would just be like horrific. Um, but yeah, the whole meat, people kind of, they think it's strange, but more and more people are starting to catch on. Like I, Brian Gallagher, as you know, I mean, he's like the most extreme person ever. He's a good friend of mine in the acting world. And I was so excited when he said that he was doing carnivore. We never really talked about it before. Um, I always knew he did crazy diets. But then when I told him, oh, like I'm I'm doing carnivore. I've been off and on it for, you know, two years. And he got really excited about that. So more and more people are doing it because they're seeing the results. And then once people see the results, then it, you know, everyone wants to give it a whirl. And it is, it's wild because you really do start to feel better. Once you go on it, those first few weeks, I'm not going to lie, they, they can be rough. But then by like week three, when things are so different, that's, that's amazing. And I mean, working in the pharmaceutical industry, when I would sell antidepressants and stuff like that, we would say give it three months. But this is like three weeks, you start to feel different. That's that's a pretty good result for, you know, anything. Yeah. And there's nothing quite like that feeling of clarity that comes over you and this kind of euphoric yeah. feeling, right? Yeah. And just that, um, right, if you've ever suffered with depression or anxiety, it's like the lift of it. That that's a beautiful, a beautiful feeling. Like I, I've always said this, that I could, there's two things like I, I don't do well with. I don't do well with like being nauseous or being depressed. <laughs> like pain, I could even handle, like I could handle pain, but those two things like, oh my gosh, you can't do any, it's just like the worst. So when that's lifted, it's such a huge difference. It changes your whole life, you know? Yeah. So how are your energy levels now as far as like you're, you're taking your kids around um, to the yeah. dance competitions and stuff like that? How how are you balancing things now compared to before? So much better. I was the type where I always like needed a nap at around like three o'clock. I mean, I just like couldn't even function no matter what I was doing. And I would even just like shut my eyes if I was like in a parking lot. So like, I just would get like this exhaustion that was unreal. And uh, yeah, that's gone away. And um, it's funny though, because I used to kind of stay up late and stuff like that. But now that I, I'm on a better schedule, like I like to go to bed early and wake up early. But I have my energy is like more consistent throughout the day instead of these highs and then like extreme lows <laughs> where I would just want to just crawl up like and just take a nap anywhere. I just couldn't even function. So that's amazing. And I'm 47 years old. And um, I would say like these past few years, like, I've had more energy than I did even when I was in my 20s. When I'm doing it right and not, you know, stupidly deciding like, oh, yeah, it's fine now. So I know now I just have to stay on it. Do you eat out much? Is it easy enough where, where you live? Is it easy enough to find places you can go where you can yeah. kind of put the veggies to the side or whatever? Yeah, I, I'll even do the thing where like I've, I'll go to like a Wendy's or something if I'm like super hungry and I forgot to bring something from home. I'll just do the whole thing where I just get the, the burgers and eat them. And that works great. So it's kind of easy, especially around here. I'm right outside of Philly. So it's like there's stuff everywhere. No matter where you go, you can find things. The biggest problem is when you go out and they're always like put stuff all over everything. Like when you order a steak, you just have to like, get, and you don't want extra like sauces and oils and all of that. That's the thing I, I do have a hard time with, with um, going, going out to eat is all the extra stuff that they put on. Um, unless you just go to like a nice steak place. So, but I would say it's not, it's not too hard. I do want to do more like meal prepping type thing because that makes it a lot easier. Because if you say, you know, put something in a crock pot, well, you have to wait eight hours for it to be done. <laughs> so I should plan it a little bit better. But 
it hasn't been too hard if I've been, say, at a dance competition and I'm just like so hungry and ready to scream. I can just go find a, a Burger King and just eat the burger. And then I'm fine. Then I'm fine. So this is it for you, do you think? Um, you, there's no no going back? I don't think I can go back because I just feel so bad. Like the, I've tried it. Believe me, I've, I've tried being like, oh, I'm so cured now. I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work out well. So I'm feeling really good right now and I'm happy. And I don't feel like I, I had a little bit of a hard time, I think, when I would go off of because I felt like I was missing out. Like, oh, but I really want to eat that. And I just feel like, well, now I'm going to miss out on it. But you really don't. It's not a big deal because then you pay for it. So I feel good. I'm happy. And it's not it's not that big of a deal. Once you're on it for a while, it just becomes kind of easy. But the beginning, like I said, it's hard, which is important to listen to all of these type of podcasts. And, um, you know, there's so many like support groups and stuff now. Like there's groups on Facebook and, and all that. So it's easier. It's surprising. Just in the last two years, the amount of the amount of whether it's YouTube channels or or doctors posting about it, whatever it is, it's just increased like crazy, right? Like crazy. Because I'm somebody who um I like to listen to things no matter what I'm doing. So there's no like idle time. So I'll be folding laundry. I'll be cleaning. I'll be getting ready for my acting classes. I, don't, I have like a podcast. I'm a big podcaster type listener too. And yeah, it's wild. The, um, the uptick in this, but it's because people feel better. It's, you know, I remember like years ago with the South Beach diet, that was a huge thing. That was, gosh, that was a long time ago, but people had huge results. And it was really because they were just cutting out processed food. Like just cut out the processed food. So I mean, that step alone is like unbelievable. If I eat anything processed, by the way, I feel like I'm going to die. Like I get heart palpitations, and I almost get like a yeah. There's something that has it gives like I, I literally feel like I'm going to have a heart attack, and it's just the, all the chemicals in the food. Um, but so like South Beach, I was like a huge thing with these major results, all those things. But this is this is something that. Um, once you're in it, you can definitely stay on it and feel good. So there's no going back for me. I've even tried like adding broccoli in and stuff, and that does not go well. Um, you make a you make a good point um, about how you just feel better, yes. and that that's one thing I think all the detractors can't get their head around. You know, because they're they're constantly saying to people, "Yeah, but this is dangerous. So much saturated fat is dangerous for you. You're gonna make yourself sick. You're gonna make yourself feel bad." And it's like the words after you've been on carnival for a a, a reasonable amount of time a month, two months, three months their words just bounce off you because your body's telling you the exact opposite thing. Exact opposite, and. The thing is, it it's such a shame. Then you you feel bad for them that people have to live like that. They, I mean, life's too short and things are hard enough, you know, to live every day where you don't feel well. Oh, my gosh. It's like, and then once you start feeling well, the amount, like the things that you can accomplish and you can just see things more clearly in general. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that people have to feel that way. But once they they know a few people who... Um, have done it and they can see the difference. I think it's going to, it's definitely, it's here to stay, this movement. You know, I hope they don't do anything to, I mean, I'm here in Philadelphia, like Lancaster's not far away with the Amish people and stuff. And like, hey, these farms and all these different things. With it. I mean, it gets crazy when uh, the government was like regulate everything. So I hope that you know, we, we're still able to get meat at like a good price and that type of thing. I started to get nervous when I was hearing all these like things about the farmers and the ranchers, but I think that we'll be okay. And this is a good, strong community that, um, yeah, I don't think meat's going away. I, I sure hope not. <laughs> yeah, same. So if, if a friend came to you and said, okay, Val, you're doing really well, looking good, you're happy, energy's seems to be great. I want some of that for myself. 
I'm willing to try carnivore. As skeptical as I am, I'm willing to try it for 90 days. How do I get started? What would you tell them? I would tell them, I'd say, here's sort of a shopping list. You're going to just get ground beef. And I tell them what roast. I just say how I do it. Usually I do a lot of ground beef. I do eggs. I do a lot of butter. Um, I make roasts and then eat that throughout the day. So I would kind of say, listen, you want all this on hand because if you're used to being a grazer or whatever, <laughs> then that's fine. You can graze on this. So in order to just so that you are just on this and don't cheat and eat any like keto snacks or something like that, I would make sure, I would say if you're going to start, what I would suggest is just have this stuff available. Have, have food readily available, meat, and then go from there. And once it's going to be hard, you're, you're, but you'll get through it. And I would also say maybe join some sort of group where you can talk about it or get recipes. If you, Because I remember in the beginning, I started to get like really sick of ground beef. Like I just couldn't do it anymore. But then they'll tell you different ways to make it, whatever. So um, that's what I would suggest. I would give them sort of the basics. I would get some of the basics. I'd say, do this and get started. But just get started. And I'd say the first three weeks are the roughest. Just do it for the first three weeks. And by week three, you're going to still want to stay on it. Because you'll start to see something. Like you'll see, you'll feel it. You'll feel a difference. And pe or people will say to you, oh, you seem happier or you, you, you haven't complained. The other thing is you don't notice the things that you complain about a lot until somebody else in your house will say it. Like, oh, you haven't complained about your hip at all. I guess your hip's feeling better. Like, oh, yeah, it is. I didn't even, you don't really think about it, but other people will say it to you. Yeah, that's a good point. And like the whole way through the process, you kind of notice things here and there, but they come up in weird ways like that. Like someone else tells you that you don't complain about that anymore. Or that's my my say. wife my wife's reaction was how I realized I no longer had bad breath and things like that. <laughs> yes. I mean just like great things like that. Like my my husband knows it. He's like, Well, you're just not complaining as much. And I'm like, Oh, did I complain a lot? Yeah. Well, what are you I saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're just not that big of a bitch anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> awesome. The one thing people often say about carnivore is it's too restrictive. What would you say to that? I would say look up different ways to cook things and learn but so the one thing i'm learning now because i just ignored it is all the different cuts of meat right so i started looking up you know i looked up at the chart of the cow and all the different you know so i'm trying to um just try different things out now that i'm not eating as much you know and um not as often so i would say if you think it's restrictive it's not as restrictive as you think it's just not that bad. You just have to kind of look for other options and, and ways to cook it. Like I was the other day, um, my daughter sent this to me. Say my daughter, she's on it. So she sent me this thing about um, this butter thing that you put in the fridge. So you just kind of put butter in the pan and you just wait till it's brown. And then you take it and you put it on a cookie sheet and you put it in the freezer. And she, so I just tried it, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it tastes like caramel. It's the weirdest thing. And I'm like, but it's just butter, but you're just browning it. But I don't know why. It was like the best thing I ever tasted in my life. And I didn't add anything to it. It was just butter, but in a different way. It tastes like a different, a whole different thing. So there's, there's uh, that's something I've got to try. Yeah. You should really try it. They call it carnivore crack. So, hey, I'm like, I've never tried crack, but I did do carnivore crack and it was amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm addicted. Yes. I'm <laughs> nice. So, Val, how can people reach out to you? Do you have any social media or any way of getting in contact? Sure. Yeah. I mean, everything's pretty much Val McAdoo. So it's uh, Val McAdoo is my handle on all my social media and on my IMDb if you want to watch any of my movies. Plus, I'm going to be working with Brian Gallagher and um, he is doing, it's called Red Meat Therapy. So he's starting a, a channel and we're going to be, since we're actors and also my business partner, Pete Pussiglione is going to also be 
interviewing with you because he's on carnivore now as well. But um, so it's the three of us. We're like the three weirdest humans on earth. So I'm going to help Brian <laughs> put together some of these skits about carnivore. So it'll be, a, you know, sort of a different, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll see. <laughs> But yeah, yes. that's really cool. And I love the name. I, I really love that name, Red Meat Therapy. Yeah. Well, Brian and Pete, like, I mean, I'm the woman in this in this threes company group. And they're, those two are the biggest criers I've ever known. I mean, I thought I was like a very emotional crier, but these two, they win. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Um, so I'll, I'll link to your, your socials below. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Val, and sharing your experience. Oh I really sense. appreciate your time. It was very, I listen to your interviews all the time. I love them. And they're, they've been very helpful to me, very helpful. So thank you very much.